Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode. I want to talk about how the menstrual cycle affects our sleep and give you some ways to balance your hormones naturally. If you know anything about me, you know I'm all about natural and not about pharmaceuticals. So that's definitely what I want to guide you on today. And also hormones, hormone imbalance was a really big part of why I couldn't sleep um, because my sleep issues started in late pregnancy, which I figured would go away when my son was born, but they didn't. So um, for two years after he was born, even after he was sleeping through the night, he became a great sleeper. I still wasn't sleeping. And a lot of it had to do with really depleted hormones and other hormone imbalances too. So, so this is really relevant to me. And I see this in a lot of my clients. Now, men can have hormone imbalances that affect their sleep too. And I talked about that in a uh, previous episode, which I'll link in the show notes. It's not just about men. It's also just about hormone balance in general that applies to both men and women. Um, but today I am going to be talking about women particularly, and especially the menstrual cycle. And I'm sure for me, it didn't help that I had my son at age 39. So I was already older. I probably already had some, well, I know that I had some health imbalances that I didn't even really know were there. And so this played a really big role in my sleep for sure. And unfortunately, as women, we are more likely to experience insomnia and daytime sleepiness. And as our hormones change throughout the month, this can affect our sleep in many different ways. So let's talk about how hormones affect sleep. So many of my clients notice that they sleep worse during certain parts of their cycle. Usually this happens around their period. And I know this was the case for me too, as I was figuring out my sleep issues, I, I and started tracking it with my cycle. I did notice that around my period was when I slept the worst. And this makes sense because at this time in our cycle is when both estrogen and progesterone are at their lowest levels. And so if our hormones are already depleted, then those even lower levels of those sex hormones can lead to insomnia. Now, what's interesting is that the fluctuations in hormones throughout our cycle also affect the amount of time we spend in different phases of sleep. So at the start of the menstrual cycle, when estrogen is low, there's actually a decrease in REM sleep. During ovulation, estrogen rises and we can feel less sleepy and have more trouble falling asleep. And we spend less time in stage two, or sorry, we spend more time in stage two in REM sleep during ovulation. In the luteal phase, after ovulation, progesterone increases, which can lead to more sleepiness, an increase in body temperature, and a decrease in melatonin. So all of those things can lead to trouble falling asleep and to waking up at night. And then as estrogen and progesterone drop right before your period, that can lead to night wakings and a decrease in stage three sleep. So it's really interesting how it even affects the phases of our sleep cycle. Now, some women have more trouble sleeping dur during the follicular phase of their cycle. So that's the first two weeks. And this can happen when there's estrogen dominance, when estrogen is significantly higher than progesterone. And besides insomnia, other symptoms of estrogen dominance related to the cycle are going to be PMS, heavy periods, breast tenderness, and bloating. Now let's talk about why testing is so important because the number one question I get is how do you balance hormones? And if you go to a doctor, they're likely going to prescribe hormone replacement therapy. So if estrogen is low, you take estrogen. If progesterone is low, you take progesterone. And you're pretty much supposed to do that for the rest of your life. What's amazing to me is I've had many clients whose doctors prescribe them hormones without even testing. So they do it based on symptoms. And this blows my mind because many symptoms of low estrogen and low progesterone are the same. And if you take the wrong hormone or too much of a hormone, it leads to even greater hormone imbalance. So testing is really key. 
And another thing I've seen in some of my female clients is um, they are way over prescribed for hormones. So say I've seen postmenopausal women whose progesterone is at premenopausal levels. And many doctors think that this is fine. And they think that too much progesterone isn't a bad thing. But progesterone and estrogen really need to be in balance with each other. And too much progesterone compared to estrogen can lead to anxiety and insomnia. And what's interesting too that I learned recently is hormone balance affects our neurotransmitters. So progesterone actually eats up neurotransmitters and estrogen preserves neurotransmitters. So it's really important that that is balanced so that one isn't happening more than the other. Now, when we talk about what causes hormone imbalance, the main reasons why hormones become depleted is because of stress and inflammation. So when your body is constantly making cortisol to deal with stress and inflammation, it takes away those resources from our sex hormones. And our bodies are always going to prioritize survival, what it sees as survival over reproduction. And so this has happened in some of my clients when I see all their sex hormones are depleted. So not just estrogen and progesterone, but also testosterone and DHEA. That is almost always the end result of long-term chronic stress. And that's stress in the body from inflammation. And it can be stress in the mind too, or, you know, lots of stressful events happening in someone's life can lead to that depletion. So how do you balance hormones? My first goal is to find out where that stress and inflammation are coming from and address those things. So that's why I also look at gut health because inflammation in the gut is a major stressor in the body. And the other tests I do look at other causes of inflammation, such as liver function, heavy metals, food sensitivities, and more. And then we also look at diet and exercise and how much stress my mental client how much mental stress my clients have to minimize all those sources of stress as much as we can. Now, I do occasionally recommend that my clients supplement with bioidentical estrogen and progesterone that you can get over the counter, and that can help them sleep and feel better in the short term. But my long-term goal for my clients is not that they take hormones and supplements forever but it can help with the short-term sleeping better immediately. So in that case, sometimes I do recommend those things. Now, when we talk about supplements for hormone balance, the main supplements that I recommend are called adaptogenic herbs. So you may have heard of some of these, such as ashwagandha, holy basil, rhodiola, maca, and even some medicinal mushrooms also have adaptogenic properties. And they're called adaptogenic because these plants survive in really harsh conditions. So high altitude, extreme cold, brutal winds, and so on. And they produce compounds to help them deal with their stressful environment. So when we ingest these plants, we also get those compounds that help us deal with that stress. Now, my favorite adaptogenic herb for women, especially if cortisol is out of whack and hormones are out of balance, is maca. And I especially recommend maca from a brand called Feminescence. They make different formulas for premenopause, perimenopause, and postmenopause. And the studies they've done have shown that maca um, helps balance cortisol and the sex hormones. So it's a really great one to, to balance those hormones. Now, another thing you can do to balance hormones is something called seed cycling. So this is the practice of eating specific seeds during the two main phases of your menstrual cycle to help promote the healthy balance of progesterone and estrogen. So it's a really gentle and completely natural way to support this healthy hormone balance. So what this looks like is on the days one to 14 of your cycle, so that's the follicular phase from menstruation to ovulation, you take every day one to two tablespoons of ground flax seeds or ground pumpkin seeds. And these seeds help improve your estrogen levels while preventing excess estrogen. And then on days 15 to 28 of your cycle, so the second half is the luteal phase 
from ovulation to menstruation, you take one to two tablespoons of ground sunflower seeds or ground sesame seeds every day. And sesame seeds are a rich source of zinc, which helps boost progesterone and also contains lignans that helps block excess estrogen as progesterone is rising. And sunflower seeds are high in vitamin E and selenium. Vitamin E can help boost progesterone production and selenium helps detox the liver from excess estrogen. So doing this can really help promote um, estrogen in the first half of your cycle and then progesterone in the second half of your cycle. Now, if you don't have a 28-day cycle, you can adjust the length of time you consume each seed um, based on your cycle length. Or for someone with shorter cycles, like I'm experiencing right now, I do the first 14 days um, with the ground flax and pumpkin seeds, and then the rest of my cycle, which is shorter than 14 days, with the sunflower and sesame seeds. Now, and if you don't have regular cycles, and you can actually follow the phase of the moon, so you'd start with day one of the new moon would when you start with the days one through 14. And you definitely want to use raw seeds, ideally use ground seeds if possible. Uh, for flax, you have to use ground for you to absorb it in the body, um, but ground is ideal. Although sometimes I do just sprinkle pumpkin seeds on a salad or sunflower seeds on a salad. So that's an option too. Um, and then you really want to store them in the refrigerator if they're ground so that they don't go rancid. Now, seed cycling does say, take some time to work with your body. Same as maca as well. It's going to take a few months to really notice the benefits. But there is a great company called Anyi that makes seed cycling boxes that you can order that makes it really easy. I have their sesame nori seasoning right now. Um, and they also have, so this is for the second half of the phase. And I love this on salads. And then they also make a cinnamon maca that is great in smoothies or on oatmeal or something like that for the first half of the cycle. So really yummy way to, uh, to work on hormone balance there. So in conclusion, while these supplements and seed cycling can help, the way to balance hormones long-term is to correct the other imbalances in your body and reduce that stress and inflammation. And this is exactly what we can help you with at the Complete Sleep Solution. So we run four functional medicine tests to find what's causing stress and inflammation in your body. And we help you handle mental stress better and stop worrying about sleep so that your mind doesn't sabotage your sleep. It's really a body and a mind program because you can't ignore one without the other. They both affect each other. So you can schedule a free consultation to find out more about the program and how it will find what's keeping you awake at night and help you sleep better soon. All right. Thanks for listening. And I will talk to you next week.